Okay, I'm here to talk about another cool physics thing on the internet. Uh, yes, it's me, Rhett. And this case, it's this impossible water jump. Let me show you part of this video. It's very popular right now. So here's this guy, and he jumps. This is a video from the internet. Um, it It's not in full speed, okay? They actually slow it down, uh, but let's play it one more time. And you'll notice it looks like he's jumping off that little bucket of water. So what do I do? You know what I do. I'm going to analyze it for you. In this case, it's all about the center of mass. Well, let's start with the video analysis. So here is a view of the tracker video analysis. This is the program I use. This is me going through it, not in real time. Uh, so in this case, a couple of things you have to do. Number one, you have to pick a size. So I chose... Uh, the, the height of that bucket to be one meter. And that might not be right, but that's okay. And then I marked the location of his feet. I marked the location of his head. And then I kind of guessed at the center of mass and went through each of these frames. Uh, you have to move the the coordinate axis a little bit. Um, it does move around a little bit just to make sure it's at, I picked the corner of that bucket uh, as my origin. And then you get the following plot. Let me show you that plot in a little bit more uh, details closer up. So here are the three positions. The red line is his feet, the green line is his head, and the blue line is the center mass. So in the center mass right here, it starts off with him running and then jumping. So that first part is not projectile motion. But after that, you can see the center mass is pretty parabolic. Now, I did kind of change things up here. This is not position versus time like you would normally think. I couldn't do that because the frame rate was not constant. It was completely messed up. So this is actually vertical position versus horizontal position. And that's why you get a little bit of this crossover stuff here. It's not completely smooth. But if he is really jumping, then his horizontal position changes constantly with time. So the trajectory should also be a parabola. But you get the most important thing here. If you look right here, at the red line with his feet, it kind of goes down and back up. That looks like, if you just look at his feet, it looks like he's jumping off the water. Of course, if you look at the center mass, he's not. Okay, so his center mass is a normal trajectory. He pulls his feet up and pushes down and up again in order to make this trick work. Okay, so I always say you don't understand something until you can model it. So let's make a model in Python. Uh, this is just me going through the program in real time. I will link to this down below. So this is a pretty simple program uh, in that I had to have three objects. I have well, two objects, really. I have the feet and the head and the center mass, and then I launch them with some velocity, and then I plot uh, the motion and I plot the trajectory. You'll notice that the feet and the head and the, the center mass all have parabolas for their position versus time. Uh, this is just a normal jump. There's nothing magic going on. OK, but if you want to make a model of the, the water jump, you kind of need to start off with something that you understand. So this is what I understand. I can I can get this working first and then I can make it a little bit more complicated. So here is the more complicated version. What I want to do is if I have a force between the head and the feet pulling them together or pushing them apart, then it they can move in the air, but it'll still be physically uh, center mass is as a trajectory of a parabola. So that's what I want to do. I want to have the same force acting on the head and the feet, but if they have different masses, they'll they'll move differently. So here's my second program. Uh, notice I, I commented, I changed this up a little bit. So what I did to make this internal force was I used a spring. So I had a spring pull the head and feet together, and then I had that spring push them apart. So at a certain time, if the time is less than two, it pulls them together, and then after that, it pushes them apart. And, and so you can get uh, the following trajectory. And you can see the feet do go up, down, and then back up. And that's the same as what happened in the water jump. Okay, now this is not new. There was something else very popular a while back that was very similar, and this is the invisible box jump. And, and here is a plot from Tracker Video of this girl. It looks like she's stepping on a box and she's not. Uh, she does the same trick. So she jumps with one foot and then while she's in the air, she moves that foot back down but keeps her right foot stationary as though it's on a box, but it's not. 
And you can see the same thing if you plot the center mass, uh, it's a normal tra a parabolic trajectory. Okay, one more example of a center mass problem. This is from the Avengers Age of Ultron. Thor is like, hey, I'm Thor. No one can pick up my hammer, so I'm just going to toss in the air and catch it. And, and so as this hammer moves in the air, the center mass also for the hammer has to be a uh, fall of free fall type motion. It should be a par parabola with respect to time. So if you were able to map out the center mass of that hammer, it should be a parabola. Okay, of course, we don't actually know the center of mass for the hammer, but we do know where the top and the bottom of the hammer are. So I could plot that instead. So here's a plot of the top and the bottom of the hammer as a function of time. And from that, I can calculate where the center mass should be. And I get a center mass for this hammer right down here at the, at the end of the handle. And that's not very, I hate to say realistic when we're talking about Thor's hammer, but uh, you know, if you have this large massive head uh, with a very, very high mass. And even if the handle is also made of some metal, it's very thin. Uh, the center mass for this whole system should be much closer to the center of the hammer head. Uh, but this says something about the movie. I don't mean to spurs your bubble or anything like that, but the hammer in the movie is actually a real prop. And it's probably made out of just the whole thing's made out of wood because you don't want to make a giant metal hammer that he can toss. So if, if that's the case, if all these materials are the same density, then you could get a center mass down there, uh, especially if you want to make the head lighter. So it's a prop, and you can see that by the way he tosses it. Okay, but that's just another example of center mass. Um, hope you enjoy the video. I'll include links down below um, for the, the two Python codes. I have a blog post on... Um, on the the water jump and there's a blog post on the invisible box challenge so i hope you enjoy that and i'll talk to you guys later